Hello everybody, OXFU here, and you'll never guess what I'm doing. Well, I mean, obviously you can guess that I'm recording another session of Metal Gear Solid 2 VR missions so I can show off some of Raiden's missions and show you that they're kind of the easy mode of the game, except for a couple of the elimination levels, like this one, where you have to flip around on top of the boxes in order to get a low enough time in order to get the best score. But fortunately, the the game leaves the M9 on top of the boxes, so you know that you have to go up there. Uh, but I'm also nice hacking. <laughs> because I am actually leaving Massachusetts in about a week. I'm going to New York for, so I can go to NYU and get uh, my Irish Studies Master's degree. So, that explains why I haven't really been around for the past few weeks. I mean, I've been putting up videos, but very sparsely. <laughs> I never really mentioned this early on because I don't really like to choke out guys, but if you choke a guy, I think it's like seven or eight times you can just knock him out. I think it's nine or ten times and you'll br snap his neck and just kill him. Which, that that's never really a good thing, but I included this level to show you that, uh, well, a lot of Raiden, Raiden's mode sneaking missions really are, sneaking VR missions really are kind of the easy mode. Because the last one I showed didn't really show that, but... I remember that last mission I just showed, uh... In Snake's version, we had to hold up two guys at once in order to get by him. And punch him in the butt. I mean, I didn't have to punch him in the butt, but it was more fun that way. <laughs> this one, they... Raiden's mode, they usually change around enemies, sometimes give you less. Not in this level, actually. The one we're on right now. This is actually probably the hardest level in the game. For the VR missions, at least. Just because... Oh my god, the, the timing is so tight. If I don't shoot that guy... Oh, I missed him. If I did not... If I was able to get that guy, I don't even know if I'd make it. But if you don't shoot that guy right away... You're gonna miss the highest score, because... I got second, and watch, 18,990, 10 points off. If I had been just a, a second earlier, I would have gotten it, but no. Anyway, we're not going to do first person view mode yet, because it's... I don't want to show off all the levels, but I do want to show it off because it's kind of cool. Instead, we're going to do some of the weapon modes. We're not going to do pistol or assault rifle, because those are boring. We're going to go right to C4 and Claymore, because those are sort of in the puzzle mode feel of the VR missions. So we get the C4 and Claymore, pretty self-explanatory, you put them down. Uh, the C4, after you put it down, you punch to make it explode. And you're taking out boxes. Seems like it's, again, pretty straightforward, but they throw a new thing into it in the next level. They give you explosive boxes, which means that you can start chaining together explosions and... Well, you can do it however you want, but if you want to get a good score, you gotta chain them together like that. Take them all out at once or something like that. I mean, most levels... most. Two of the levels will have you take them out all at once. Two of them, you'll have to go around and take out multiples at once. Like, this next one... Come on. Keep waiting for it, and then it doesn't go. This next one, we actually have to use the Claymore, and we have to be spot on with our timing and our placement, because otherwise, we're, we're just not going to get it at once. <laughs> I love that every time I do these as well, I just end up blowing up Raiden a lot. Because <laughs> oh, we're all a little sadistic when we play video games, aren't we? I mean, who hasn't played The Sims? Who hasn't played a... Well, any game where you can just kill off your character. I'm crap at this level, I'm gonna be straight up. I, can't, I, I know there's a pattern, I can see the pattern, but I'm just bad at placing the C4 and getting the timing right. So, you're gonna start seeing me do a lot of... Uh, a lot of second rank levels for the weapons mode just because I couldn't care less to spend half an hour on one level to get Snake's accolades. I mean, as much as I like Snake, I don't, I, I'm not that big of a 
I don't want him to hang up my my uh, my virtual mission time on the fridge and tell me I did a good job. Okay, yes I do. But <laughs> anyway. So the other reason, since we're at a little bit of a lull, I don't have to explain this to you, really. It's pretty straightforward. The other reason why I haven't really been around for the past month or so is I've been working because I'm moving to New York and I gotta get some money before the summer's out. Hopefully I'll get a new job in New York. It's not a definite thing. Nice Hopefully. Work. I have to, actually, but <laughs> otherwise, uh... Things might go wrong with the whole renting an apartment thing. But anyway, <laughs> enough about my financial troubles. Uh, I was working plastic injection molding for a month. And that was fun. I'll tell you more about it in a second because we're moving on to the Stinger missile. And this, this is a fun one. Because we're going to jump up here and we're going to shoot that, shoot that target. And you're going to think, oh, okay, we shot it. That's only one target. We're going to be fine, right? We're going to get the top score. No, we're actually going to score pretty low, because the timing is pretty def- Well, we could have gotten second if I was a little faster, but the, the timing is really short for the top rank, so you just gotta- You don't you don't even have to get up on the box at all with the Stinger Missile, though. Nice you just lock on and shoot it up, and it curves. <laughs> Which is a fun thing with the Stinger Missile. And I'm glad that they, uh, they use it for puzzles in the VR mission rather than just making it kind of boring. Like, I think this level's kind of boring just because it's find the targets and shoot at them, but the next few get kind of interesting, so. Anyway, so plastic injection molding. If you've ever had to do that, you know it's not fun. Unless you've had to do it for like 20 years or something, then you're used to it, but you still know it's not fun to start it. Uh. Uh, so it involves standing in the same place for eight hours, doing the same action in a few seconds at a time for the same eight hours. By the way, we're not even going to go up the stairs for this. This is a great thing about the Stinger Missile. If we had gone up those stairs, we would not get even a ranking time. <laughs> we might have, just... I don't think I even... No, I think I get the second rank on this on this level. But we wouldn't get a good time if we went up those stairs, because have you seen how Raiden runs up those stairs? He is slow. He is slow. <laughs> but no, Plastic Injection Molding is probably the worst game I've ever had. Even when I was working uh, in fast food, I was still moving around. I wasn't just standing in the same place th those entire eight hours. So... If you don't have to do it, don't do it. I mean, you should probably... I, people say it's a good experience to work factory or industrial or whatever, so... I mean, if you want to do it, go ahead, but I mean, I won't think less of you if you decide to like, leave. I mean, I did, so... <laughs> so I couldn't think less of you for it. Anyway, again, another kind of boring mission. It's just point and click. We're not... these... The next mission is better. <laughs> Let me put it at this. This is a this is actually isn't a bad mission because it teaches you um, the other thing about the stinger. Um, in addition to locking on and then firing when you're sh when you're pointing a different way, you can also uh, fire and then lock onto a missile or onto a target, and well, it'll lock on and the missile will go towards it, which is again kind of cool. But <laughs> oh man. So, actually, I should probably wait until after this level to explain some other things, because I could start. Alright, anyway, so, I'm moving to Queens, New York, which is going to be, well, exciting, because I've never actually lived in a city. I've lived in... I've lived in suburbia for about half my life, and the rest of the half... The other half of my life, the rest of that other half of my life... I don't know what I'm saying there. Um, has been in rural. Okay, this is it. This is it. This is the reason this level is great. Because you just have this huge mass of targets floating around, and there's a, one explosive target in the middle. So no matter where you hit it, it's it's just going to take out the whole thing. It's just a bit of fun, and I like that they put it in there as the last enemy. Anyway, we're moving on to the Nikita missile. 
which is one of the more interesting weapons in the Metal Gear Solid series, actually, because uh, this is the remote-controlled rocket. So we're going to fire it, and yeah, we're, we're the rocket. Uh, you can unequip the Nikita missile in order to make the rocket explode prematurely. Uh, insert a sex joke here if you want to. <laughs> and I got an achievement. You, the way you control it is using the thumbstick, just like you would move. But um, when you're firing straight, it moves faster. When you're turning, it moves slower. You have a limited fuel supply for each rocket, so you're pretty much just on a timer. And yeah, it's pretty fun, especially when you can sometimes see yourself, as you just saw like the back of the rocket launcher. <laughs> you can sometimes see yourself uh, while you're firing it, which is kind of fun. Nice work. Um, they use it in Metal Gear Solid 1 to take out the control panel for an, for an electrified floor. We're going to use that again in this game because uh, while these virtual missions are kind of interesting, uh, they didn't really do a lot of interesting things with the with the game itself. Actually, Metal Gear Solid, no, Metal Gear 2, I believe uses the, the, the Nikita Missile in the same way. I don't know about Metal Gear 1. It's been a while since i played that. Especially because there's the two versions. This is the other part I like about the Nikita Missile, because once you hit a sloped... If you hit a flat surface, it, it blows up, obviously. But if you hit a sloped uh, surface, as you just saw, it elevates or... Uh, descends. I was going to say, like, de-inclinates. I'm going in for Irish studies as my master's, and I can't even speak English. <laughs> um, but that means that a lot of the, well, the last few virtual missions that we're going to have, I, a lot of, we're already halfway through them. All the last few virtual missions we have for the Nikita Missile are going to be like this, where we have mazes, and we have red boxes that we can't hit, or they'll take away points, and if you, if you can't make it past the maze in time, or if you hit any of the boxes, you might as well reset, otherwise... It's no point. You're gonna, you're gonna pretty much lose all the points that would have guaranteed you a ranking anyway. <laughs> it makes them kind of easy because you know if you screw up once, there's nothing you can do. And I think Snow Solid Snakes are harder because the the targets move faster. As you can see, the red ones are moving in this in this case. Um, and I think you have less time to get the the higher rankings. So you have to make sure that you have the missile going straight as much as possible so it's going fast. But in Raiden's it's pretty it's pretty relaxed, low-key, it's it's fun. Anyway. What was I saying? A long time ago. Saying something about how moving to New York would be exciting or something, how I'm moving to Queens. But we're almost <laughs> we're almost done with no, we are done with the Nikita missiles, aren't we? I was expecting uh, Raiden to do his little victory cheer, but... Oh, maybe he did. Maybe I missed it. Anyway, we're going to be doing one more weapon while we're here. The High Frequency Blade, which is a weapon we're gonna, not going to get in the main game for... Until very late. And, well, it's an interesting one. Uh... You don't punch like you'd expect. You don't use the, the the shoulder button or anything like you'd expect. Uh, I'm trying to think. <laughs> I was trying to think. How do you use weapons in Metal Gear Solid? No, you you wouldn't. You don't use the square button like you'd expect with any other weapon. You can, uh, but it'll change it to the uh, blue version of the blade, which is just uh, the non-lethal version. Uh, instead, you're using the the right thumbstick. So slash horizontally, slash vertically, and uh, you click it in to do a little, a little stabby motion, a little. He does, he does this little, like, uh, you'll see it soon enough. But he does this little uh, whip around when he brings it back, which makes it really a slow move. So you don't want to use it often, <laughs> except in the later levels when we need absolutely need precision. And you'll see what I mean. Um, and there's also one if you rotate the thumbstick around, he'll do this sweeping, spinning attack. Which takes out a lot of enemies, but looks really silly. But I mean... <laughs> nothing wrong with that. Alright. 
Uh, we're also going to see uh, a lot of this. You get to kick targets, or you can roll into them as well, and they'll go flying and hit other targets. So if you didn't figure out you could do this with uh, guys, and like I did with uh, Metal Gear Bowling, well, this is how you find out. <laughs> nice work. Uh, is this the one where we start having to use the precise hit? I think it is. Yeah, because see, we want to miss the uh, the red targets, because otherwise if we hit them, we lose a lot of points. Like that. We lost thousands of points, I think, actually. Wow, that's a lot. So that's why we use the thumbstick click in attack, even though it's, again, slow as heck. Even... No, I, I did use the thrust. I thought I just did a slash there anyway, <laughs> ignoring my own advice. Uh, anyway. The last part of my news is that uh, we are actually sharing the apartment that we're getting with another family. We're living on the second floor. Nice and this other family has a 15-month-year-old. I, I was about to say 15-month-year-old living with them, but no, it's just a 15-month-year-old as a part of the family. <laughs> so uh, I have to... I have to be an adult. I have to censor myself. I know I don't swear that often, but I do swear on occasion, and I don't want this uh, child to pick up bad habits from me, and I don't want the child to say, to say fuck, and the mother to be like, where did he learn that? And him to say, oh, Mr. Fogarty upstairs said it one time, I didn't know what it meant, or something, something like that. So I'm gonna pretty much censor myself. Uh, I'm probably going to use the, the tried-and-true method of censorship for small children. So instead of, like, of say, instead of saying fuck, I will use words like flapjack or falafel. Words that have the same impact feel, but they are not swears. So instead of saying something like, damn that bitch-ass motherfucker, I will say stuff like, damn that bitch-ass mother flapjack. Okay? Cool. Anyway, that's the High Frequency Blade. Next time, we're going to move on to some alternative missions. Hold up mode. Probably my favorite. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time. This has been me, OXFU. This has been Metal Gear Solid 2, the virtual missions. Take it easy.